let's talk to one of the party's leading spokesmen, Patrick O'Flynn. Patrick, welcome back to The Daily Politics. Who do you want to be Prime Minister? Uh, I want Nigel Farage to be Prime Minister. But realistically, we know that's not going to happen. So who do you want to be Prime Minister? Um, so you're asking me to choose between who exactly? Well, David Cameron and Ed Miliband. Let's just assume they are the two people most likely, in fact, the only two likely to become Prime Minister. Who do you want to be Prime Minister out of those two? Uh, personally, yes. uh, I find that a very hard choice to make. But you must have and thought about it be because you know those the, are the options. By the British people. Right. I think, I think uh, uh, other party leaders and senior party people from other parties will be guided by the British people in terms of how many votes each party uh, gets uh, yeah. in, in, in terms of the House of Commons. But you yeah. must have a personal preference and are you trying to tell me there are others who could be Prime Minister other than David Cameron or Ed Miliband? Uh, no. Uh, what I was, I was indicating to you is I don't have at this juncture a huge personal preference either way, but I think it's very important that the person with... No one will have a clear mandate, will they? But the person with the least damaged mandate probably deserves first dibs at trying to form a government, don't so, they? So you'd be equally happy to see Ed Miliband go through the door at number 10 as you would to see David Cameron? Well, look... I, I've just spent many months working with Suzanne Evans, Nigel Farage and others on putting together the choices, the different choices that UKIP is offering mm. and on which, you know, if you'll forgive the phrase, the Lib Lab Con are much of a muchness. So we'll bring down foreign aid, we'll meet the 2% of GDP defence target, uh, we'll definitely massively step up our provision for veterans, we'll have fully costed extra money uh, into the NHS and we'll put some money back in people's pockets. We'll have the highest personal allowance and the best break for people who've been dragged into the 40p rate. Those are the priorities uh, that I want to talk about and I want to communicate. I'm not particularly fussed or thinking about which of the tired old failing parties may fail a little less than the other one. Right. You may not be, but I think a lot of your supporters and voters will be interested to find out because they have preferences. In a survey of UKIP councillors that this programme did with Comres, it showed that actually the majority would rather have David Cameron as Prime Minister. 69% of UKIP councillors would prefer David Cameron as Prime Minister compared to 6% for Ed Miliband. And it's not just the polling that we've done. 45% of UKIP supporters voted Conservative in 2010, compared to less than 5% for Labour. So I suggest that your supporters and voters would like to hear you state who you would rather see as the next Prime Minister and who you will work with to get your priorities through. Well, Joe, uh, I actually got interrupted on the, on the sound there by someone talking about Nathan and wanted an NBH. But I'll tell you what, your question was actually so long uh, that even despite the interruption, I, I got the gist of it, that you're still <laughs> seeking to talk to me. Not about the fantastic proposals UKIP has launched today, but, this... but about this tired old debate of who do I least, uh, least unprefer, well, all right, if you well, like. Patrick, I want I to talk about yes. our policies to get, to get immigration back under control in this country, to cut working people's tax and allow them the prospect of their wages rising again, about all the exciting new choices that UKIP and UKIP alone are presenting. And how important is that in-out referendum on Europe? Europe. Uh, it's absolutely key. Right. A free, fair and early EU referendum. Uh, the British people have waited now 40 years and, and what they, they uh, were signed up to and then agreed not to leave is completely different to what is now the European Union moving towards a full political right. union the and the Eurozone countries deepening the integration uh, with every passing year. Right, but the truth is the only thing standing between the British people and an in-out referendum on Europe is UKIP stopping David Cameron becoming Prime Minister? Uh, I'll tell you what, David Cameron stood up in the House of Commons, and I know this because I was a political journalist at the time, and told his own MPs and the House that an in-and-out referendum wasn't in the national interest and he didn't want to see it. The Conservative it was the Party had pledged UKIP an in-and-out referendum in 2017. They pledged yeah, that referendum yeah, David in Cameron, David Cameron... David Cameron, I think it was an article in one of his favourite newspapers, The Sun, uh, gave a cast-iron guarantee of a referendum on the Lisbon Treaty with no qualifications whatsoever. Uh, he, to use the phrase, ratted on that deal. We need UKIP MPs in the House of Commons, preferably holding the balance, to, uh, as one online commenter I saw today said, to keep the 
bees honest. Right. And I think that's what the British people want from UKIP. But you have to accept that if the Conservatives are promising an in-out referendum on Europe, that is your key pledge, you've just said so, by voting UKIP in seats like Clacton, Thurrock, Camborne and Redruth, you're going to deprive the Tories of seats they need to form the next government Sorry, and actually carry out that in-out referendum. Well, no, UKIP has a cracking record of getting political leaders to change their minds. You know, uh, we've got immigration, we've got the 40p tax rate, which uh, I think we've made George Osborne wake up to after lowering the threshold uh, mercilessly in this parliament. Nick Clegg was actually once for an in-out referendum. He's changed his mind in the other direction. Uh, there are plenty of people senior in the Labour Party who want an in-out referendum too. We'll see how the cards fall on May the 8th. Our priority is to present our excellent new policies and choices to the British people and get as many UKIP MPs elected into the House of Commons as possible. And in a democracy, that's what parties do at general elections. Patrick, stay with us. Indeed, Patrick, uh, of do stay with us because uh, Nigel Farage has been challenged to a duel in Hyde Park by a Polish prince brandishing a sabre. Janek Zulinski laid down the gauntlet to the UKIP leader in a YouTube video saying he had, quote, had enough of discrimination against Polish people. I've had enough of the discrimination against Polish people in this country. The most idiotic example I've heard of has been Mr. Nigel Farage blaming migrants for traffic jams on the M40. Enough is enough, Mr. Farage. So what I'd like to do, Mr. Farage, is to challenge you to a duel, an offer of a duel, if you agree. I would like us to meet in Hyde Park one morning with our swords and resolve this matter in the way that uh, an 18th century Polish aristocrat and an English gentleman would traditionally do. Are you up for it, Mr. Farage? Do you agree? Well, we tried to organise that duel here ourselves, being only helpful, <laughs> but his usual health and safety wouldn't let the sword in through the door. But Yannick Zielinski joins us from Broadcasting House. UKIP's Patrick O'Flynn is still with us from Thurrock. Uh, Yannick Zielinski, w w what's the wrong with the treatment of Poles in this country? I thought they were uh, doing very well in Britain, which is why so many Poles come to work and live here. Yes, as Nigel Farage himself said, Poland has sent its brightest and its best. But, but there is uh, increasingly, from year to year, mainly as a result of the existence and activities of UKIP, increasing hostility to the Polish community. Uh, I want to tell you the real reason why I've used uh, a sword as the symbol of, of what I'm doing, because I want to draw attention to the physical violence against Poles in this country on a daily basis. All right, let me put you those... UKIP, okay. UKIP right, and I Mr. Got that. Farage. I need to go to Patrick O'Flynn now. Uh, Patrick O'Flynn, the, the rhetoric of UKIP is um, causing people to hit out at Poles. What do you say to that? Uh, it's utter rubbish. We don't blame migrants, we blame a broken immigration system. And don't you think there's a slight whiff of suspicion that the gentleman you're talking to uh, is verging on being a self-publicist? And actually, it gives me a sense of nostalgia, because when I was at Cambridge University once, I was challenged to a duel by an old Etonian, because I was arguing that our college should drop its formal links with Eton. Um, he never went through with it. It's what you might call BS. Okay. Uh, and I don't mean big society. No, I, wor I worked that out. I'm also just taking a second to uh, grasp that someone who's led by, uh, leads a party is led by Nigel Farage is calling uh, someone else a self-publicist. So let me go to Yannick uh, Zielinski and say, you're just a self-publicist and there's no grounds to your claim. Uh, uh, listen, let me say, I'm worse than a self-publicist. I'm an exhibitionist, but I'm using <laughs> my wonderful or not wonderful personal qualities for a cause. I'm born here. I've lived here all my life. I'm a Polish origin. I feel my roots and my identity. And I'm sick and tired of what I've seen happening in this country over the last few years. All right, it's that... got so bad, even six-year-old Polish girls in English schools get beaten up. And where do they get it from? They get it from their parents. And where right. do their parents get it from? From UKIP. All right, let me go back to uh, Patrick O'Flynn. Uh, do you stand by uh, Nigel Farage's statement that immigrants like Poles are clogging up the M4? 
Uh, I stand by the point that if in a country with already incredibly high population density and the highest density of all being in the, in the south of England, that if you keep adding to the population, then other things being equal, yeah. you will have more but are they clogging up the M4? congestion. Uh, that, that's, just, that's just common sense, isn't it? Well, uh, but they're there clogging are more, up more the M4. People, more traffic, more traffic jams. Oh, okay, so uh, you do stand by well, it. I mean, that, that's right. my answer. That, well, right. there's more congestion. The more people and more cars you have in a given space, All right. clearly. Uh, Yannick Zielinski, just a final point. We're running out of time. You've yes. said it's a complete... Uh, 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 don't you agree with Nigel Farage? He says that Poland has lost so many of its brightest and best young people to Britain. Wouldn't it be better for Poland if most of, of them stayed and helped their own country? Yeah, but we live in a globalised world nowadays. There are no simple answers to these things. The point is, there's been a, a Polish community and a Polish huge contribution to this country for over a hundred years. Marx and Spencer, Tesco, all derived from Poland. Oh. That The work ethic of our people here now deserves uh -huh. respect and they're not getting it. And on many occasions they're getting violence, verbal or physical instead. Uh, all right. I thank you both uh, for joining us this morning. There was uh, no violence in the making of that particular item. Thank goodness. Because they were more than a sword's length away. <laughs>